against same-sex marriage. Now you're for it. You defended President Obama's immigration policies. Now you say they're too harsh. You supported his trade deal dozens of times. You even called it the gold standard. Now, suddenly, last week, you're against it. Will you say anything to get elected? Well, actually, I have been very consistent over the course of my entire life. Just jump right in front of me. You want a coffee, motherfucker? I didn't even see you. Thought I was a fucking knock you out, you fucking fucking faggot. Yeah, I have a case against uh, somebody. Two zero one six one nine five six zero seven, and I've called down there repeatedly and uh, been put in, on an answering machine and never gotten a a call back and. Uh, you know, the statute of limitations is running out on this case. Yeah, I've got a case, uh, 2016195607. Uh, Two zero one six one nine five six zero seven, and I've called repeatedly, and you keep putting me on uh, Detective Holt's answering machine, and I never get a call back. Well, I don't want an answering machine again. I want to talk to somebody. Yeah, um, I've called uh, repeatedly and gotten Detective Holt's answering machine, and I can't get uh, anybody to call me back. I've got this case uh, that uh, is nearly a year old, and I assumed when I first talked to Case Officer Walker that I was basically doing everything I had to do. And uh, when I called back and talked to Detective Holt, he told me that the year was almost up, and you know, this is all news to me. I thought, well, when you call in, you know, that's it, you've started your case. I got a case number, I thought that was it. Um, what do I have to do to file charges against this guy as like a John Doe, since we don't know who he is actually at the moment? You can't file charges if you don't know who he is. Well, why not? Well, because the police department hasn't bothered to go to Kroger and get the information, we don't know who okay. it is. Okay, well, I'm not, I can't help you with that. Let me see if his sergeant's available. Sure. It's uh, Major Headrush, M-A-J-O-R-H-E-A-D-R-U-S-H, -E at hotmail.com. No, I need your name and phone number. 
Oh, you and asked I me. Have, you I'm asked gonna me. email his sergeant and ask him to give you a call. Great. Um, but you said email. Oh, I, I see. Okay. Sorry. Uh, my phone number is, uh, and the uh, name is Martin, like Steve Martin, and Drummond, D is in dog, R U M M O N D. And what is your case number? It's 2016 197 now, if I had all of their resources, I could have found out who this guy was a long time ago. But Sir, it doesn't. I'm civilian. You're going to have to give your your uh, frustration to Sergeant Cooper. He's Detective Holt. Well, Director I'm, Cooper. I'm not angry. I don't get angry. I'm just like <laughs> trying to get some movement here. You know what I mean? Well, so anyway, I understand, I but you're you're talking to a person who can't do that. So. Oh, I know. I talk to people all the time. They they don't don't mind. <laughs> I understand you can't do anything. It's no big deal. Okay, I'll uh, get this email to him. I was just hoping you could answer some questions. That's all. All right. Thanks anyway. Mm -hmm. This is crazy, man. Of course, my show already has the recording of the guy. So, you know, this guy really threatened me. Can't get any movement. You know, we could I could have found out who he was. Um, just by the uh I'll bet you they used some kind of card, if nothing else a Kroger card. And uh you know, we could have caught these guys or this guy. His wife was nice. She just kept pulling him away. And uh, she said his name. I think it was Randy in the recording. So we have a first name. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just absolutely no effort on their part to catch this guy. While me, every effort to intimidate and screwed up household. I can't believe that they can't do any better than this. <laughs> okay, so... Um, this is kind of where I started, and <clears throat> I'm trying to figure out just how an American like me, in a fairly big city like Lexington, Kentucky, gets justice when they're when they've been uh, injured, hurt, uh, threatened, uh, when a criminal crime, like if the police completely ignore them when they say that a crime's been committed against them and uh, do absolutely nothing to help them get justice, right? I mean, isn't that a criminal? That's like, uh, well, we don't give a shit about you or your, you know, when some, like the FBI, the CIA, the uh, police, the whatever, these are people who are charged with, uh, I mean, I assume that they are required to provide justice to the community. And the community gets to decide what's justice, not them. And this is what's going on, okay? In fact, an American cannot, at least in Lexington, Kentucky, and I think it's this way all around the United States, especially with this militarization of the police and this corporate corporation -ing of the police, this establishment police. What's happening is we're not allowed to file charges. I'm not allowed to put charges on file. So I'm not allowed to go down to the courthouse and say... I want to file charges, which would just file them, right? And uh, I assume that would request that a judge looks at them and gives me the opportunity to request that uh, if I want to, if I want to subpoena evidence, if I want to a search warrant, if I want an arrest warrant. 
I don't get to do any of that. And if you try and get the county clerk or the police or anybody to do that, uh, well, in my experience, I haven't been able to get them to do much of anything. Okay, this guy threatened me rather belligerently. Uh, as opposed to what I've done, and I've been uh, arrested for uh, third degree terrorist uh, threatening, even though I never threatened anybody. All I did was express my anger, and I never once said I was going to do anything to anybody or threaten to do anything to anybody. Uh, but this guy did. And the first guy who I talked to, a Detective Walker, well, he never called me back. And uh, I was at Wal Kroger's, and I over and over again tried to get the police to come, and they wouldn't come. And I finally went home <laughs> and called him, called them from home and got him. And he gave me a case number, but that's nothing. That's just a complaint. It doesn't amount to anything. And then he never followed up on it. He never went to Kroger. He never called me back. So, you know, I hurt my leg and I had a lot of things going on. And uh, nearly a, a year went by, uh, actually 11 months, maybe a little less than 11 months. So I called again. I talked to a uh, Detective Holt. Never called me back. And it's been nearly a month now, and this thing's... They are... Look, I think some or all of them down there know about my terroristic threatening uh, thing, which is not terroristic threatening. What it is is political speech, and they don't like it. Okay? That's what it really comes down to. So I'm saying, okay, uh, what I'm saying is, first of all, that I think that they don't like me because of what I said, and uh, I will uh, let you hear what I said. I'll insert it right here so you can hear what I said. Alternative, an alternative to, uh, and I won't end up dead. 
Okay, so, yeah, you could interpret it that uh, I was talking to her, but I wasn't. And uh, uh, I didn't have any idea that she was listening. I completely forgot about her, to be quite honest. I was just thinking about uh, what I was saying to myself, basically getting it down on the car cam. And, yeah that's probably the most inflammatory uh, you know conversation I've ever had with myself uh, I mean I've thought about those things over and over and over again because um, I like to study terrorism domestic terrorism eventually especially because people on the left suffer from attack after attack by these right-wing nationalists. We all know what happened in Charlotte. You know, no left-wing people, no progressives. We're progressives. We're not, we're not really left-wing. We're not really liberal. I mean, some of us are left-wing. Some of us are liberal. But what we are is progressives. And, uh, and we suffer from a lot of attacks by the by the fascists, you know, that's why they've created this whole group, anti-fascist group. It's almost like all the way know, from where it started at the uh, snap place. I think I've got people who really hate me there, Republicans. I'm talking about conservatives who, you know, they think that everybody who talks about politics is a criminal. You know, we're not even supposed to be talking about it. Just let them run the world and run our lives and and don't ever question them, don't know, okay? So I think everybody from the guy who's in charge of the people who interview me at the snap place, who was a pain in the ass to me already, even though he never let me see his face, but he was directing the people there. All the way through the police and the county clerk, county uh, attorney, um, probably right up to the judges and everybody else. They probably all heard this thing and they probably all hate me. <laughs> and all I'm doing, and that's really insane right there, isn't it? Because all I'm do doing is talking about how mistreated I am, which should make them feel sorry for me, but no, they take it as an indictment. Well, guess what? I am indicting them. I'm, I am absolutely saying that they're a bunch of fuck-ups. That they shouldn't be involved with justice, with the justice system in any way. Because they don't do anything. They don't do anything, and then they go after people who haven't done anything. And they don't do anything to try and... Uh, uh, like maybe they should have political groups where the police say that you know we got to do something about poverty in this town and we got to do because you know you can't get rid of drugs you need to get rid of the poverty the poverty and the drugs combined together are a huge problem but the the drugs themselves man people are going to do drugs whether you like it or not you guys keep on fucking with everybody over drugs all you do is create a whole lot of angry people, including me. I think it's really obnoxious what you're doing. You know, and I've never known anybody who does more drugs than cops. All my friends who I've known throughout my life who were cops did drugs. I mean, people I used to smoke pot with in high school, and they became cops, and they still did 
smoked weed and other things and some of the worst criminals are cops I'm sorry you you don't like people saying that but the truth is it's true it's like I was telling my lawyer the other day I think 50% of the people who uh, try to become cops soldiers priests are all out to commit crimes that's the whole reason that they become cops you know or maybe they don't admit that to themselves but I think like half of them do I mean we'd be lucky if half of them aren't criminals right <laughs> but you know a long time ago I said to myself uh, you know it just seems like people get away with crime too easy I see the list of all the unsolved crimes well what about cops well, it sure would be easy for a cop to commit a crime like that, wouldn't it? I'm thinking. And then I saw the movie, I think it was Deadpool with Clint Eastwood. And I was like, yeah. You know, he's got that figured out. I mean, cops, it's so easy for them to commit crimes. I mean, who who is in the best place to commit a crime? Now, I'm not saying that we don't have a crime problem, but... Uh, I'm not going to get into how to solve it exactly, but I'll tell you right now, poverty and uh, reforming the criminal justice system so that you have, I mean, people should be able to come in and sit down with cops that are trained in the law, and the cops should help them uh, file charges, subpoena evidence, get a search warrant, uh, get an arrest. These four things right here should be things that are available to all Americans without charge nobody there should not be a price on justice this is obnoxiously rude this thing that they've done I mean everything about it one this thing about uh, making people pay oh so you can't get justice if you're poor now nah, no the justice system should be like the fire department man somebody calls the fire department they don't ask you how much money you are on have on the phone you know um, or at any point like they shouldn't maybe they do too I don't know but for for justice there should not be any and and all these things like uh, and how about innocent until proven guilty why should I have to pay uh, a bail you know, you process me, uh, you, you, uh, you know, you either get a conviction or you don't. You, you, innocent until proven guilty. Now, I'm not saying in the most heinous, you know, somebody sets off a bomb or, or stabs 20 people. Uh, you got 50 witnesses who saw him do it and none of them have any reason to lie okay you know I mean there can be reasons but because a guy said that uh, you make me so angry you want to you make me want to kill somebody or blow somebody up you're gonna run down and arrest them especially after they have come in and offered to turn themselves in three times and told the uh, investigating uh, uh, detective um, Merker over and over that he's more I'm more than willing to come in um, tell me how much the bail is which I don't think is right but you know so I I could have just come in paid the bail they could have fingerprinted me and all that bullshit and you know I'm not even sure if they you know a suspect is a suspect they're not uh, first of all you're not going to decide whether what they did was a crime or not and you're not going to decide whether they're guilty or not and that's what's going on here I mean these people are deciding that and they're punishing people like they're taking people's licenses away because they refuse to do the drunk driving test fuck that man that's so unconstitutional it's not even funny and that's what's going on here man they're deciding uh, what's constitutional and what isn't and the people get to decide that and we're going to make sure I mean if we have to fire the whole fucking lot of them and replace them we will 
you know, life will go on, crime will go on, and so will uh, the our, you know, public servants will go on. We'll get other people, but we don't have to put up with this. This is bullshit, man. These people find will find themselves out on the streets. Gonna find it very hard for them to to get a job. Um, the people are on the march, and they're making uh, a difference. Uh, we're um, I'm a progressive Democrat, and progressive Democrats feel the same way I do. And we are millions upon millions. Nobody wants to admit that. You know, Hillary Clinton doesn't want to admit that because she's the one who wants to say, no, she's millions. No. Her support is so thin right now, and our support is massive. Most Democrats are tired of her bullshit. They're tired of uh, what she did to Bernie, and they're tired of what, uh, of how she lost, you know, giving us this, this fucking disaster, right? I mean, no, Trump, Trump hasn't really done anything. I mean, nothing happened on January 7th. The country didn't just fall into... But what a, what a fuck up he is, huh? What a dumb fuck. I mean, he just... He can't, he can't open his mouth without saying something stupid. Something ignorant, something self-centered and bigoted. Anyway, the point is, is that we're coming. You know, and there's nothing you can do about it. You know, you could throw me in jail for life and it wouldn't matter. I mean, these people, they're going to be the leaders. They're going to win elections. They're going to uh, get a lot of support when people find out what they're all about. Because they're all about the community. And they're all about new and more advanced ways of of doing things to, and they're all about changing things for the better and I know Republicans and and uh, establishment Democrats I know the establishment and their lamestream media is going to do everything they can to keep us from coming but guess what there's nothing you can do I mean, this is one of those things like a tidal wave kind of thing. This is massive. It's it's beyond us. It's something inhuman. It's like it's uh, got a life of its own. I mean, it not like it does. It does have a life of its own. It's based on truth and justice and all those good things that we were brought up to believe in. And then we found out that it was all bullshit, right? It was all just the people who wanted money just fooling us and I know you guys hate that you hate that you're not going to be in power anymore that you're not going to but you know what we're going to take care of you too I, I know you can't you don't want to believe that and you're not willing to trust us you're not willing to uh lose control, but you're going to lose control. I know you don't believe me, you think you're all hot shit and you think you can keep this from happening, but you can't. And you'll see. You'll see. I know I'm right. So, so now in that future world, a person will be able to go down and there will be a lot more judges and instead of lazy bullshit was what I see when I'm down there uh, the courts don't even open till one o'clock in the afternoon in most case most case there's nothing going on down there and I don't really see anybody working real hard for these people who tell us we all gotta work hard and we're gonna be coming down there and we're gonna be filing our charges with the court and we'll be talking to judges or whoever we end up setting this up to get a sub get to get subpoenas. I mean, I saw the county attorney clerk or lady come in and and with a stack of subpoenas. Why are they the only people in the 
fucking world who can get a subpoena against somebody for evidence, huh? What's that all about? Or get them to uh, come in as a, uh, you know? I mean, I have to be charged with something and be investigated and arrested in order to get my own subpoenas. And that's what I'm going to do, by the way. I'm going to be dragging the the whole pe all the people involved in my case, all these cops and all these, and I, I'm going to demand to know. And they're going to be under oath. We'll see whether they lie or not. Uh, under oath to admit why they felt like okay like like let's take detective Merker okay I tell him a dozen times that I'm more than happy to come in and all this stuff I'm perfectly nice I'm obviously he says that I he, to this day when I just talked to him the other day he says that uh, you know oh, we made all these excuses but the fact is is he should not have turned my case over to the uh, county uh, attorney without making sure that the county attorney and the people involved over there who read the case once he turned it over to them understood that I'm perfectly willing to come in and all that. Instead, they just go ahead and issue an arrest warrant and send people over here and it was fucked up man I mean I can just tell you that it was fucked up they, did, they, did. they didn't even have a place to put me and then they wanted me to stand out there for who knows how long while they call one of those trucks to come pick me up you telling me you couldn't send one fucking car with a back seat that's big enough for me to fit into I mean I'm not like 500 pounds you know I'm just six foot two two eighty you know well two seventy five now thank you keep on dropping that weight so you know what the fuck's that all about and and then if he told them that I was more than happy to turn myself in and I was cooperating and that I was down at the police department several times which made it obvious that I wasn't afraid of them processing me or anything like that even though I think it's illegal under the I mean, it should be under the Constitution, innocent until proven guilty, and you should be treated that way, which you're not. So, if he told them all that, then why did they do it? You know, why didn't they just get on the phone the next day and say, uh, you know, your bail's going to be 300 and something bucks, and uh, you need to turn yourself in over here. Okay, fine. And then if I don't send, show up, then you can send cops after me. You know, but that's bullshit, man. That's a, just a bunch of fucking bullshit what they did to me. And I, I'm going to find out who it was that either did not make it clear that I was cooperating or, uh, or who did it, even though I made it clear. Because if that's the case, um, you know, either way, they're fucked. Because whether I get them on negligence or on just harassment they're they're fucked it doesn't matter which one I get them on they're both uh, you know it's like saying well you can I can say you're really stupid or you're an asshole right which is something I say about a lot of people when I when I see this kind of activity going on so that's what I'm you know they don't make laws like guilty of being stupid or guilty of being an asshole but you know what I mean I, they're guilty of something and uh, you know both of them will amount to the same thing and that's harassment and I don't really care whether it's because you may not be able to prove even whether it's on purpose or not but it I say it is on purpose and I say it amounts to the same thing it amounts to me being woken up at 10 o'clock at night and taken uh, and handcuffed and then forced to cram into the back seat of a car or stand in my neighborhood my mother's neighborhood I was I told them I would be here so that's how they knew to come here and stand there and wait for a fucking paddy wagon to show up uh, 
and you, you need to understand fuck and fucking and fuck this and all that that's a clear expression of my anger that's exactly what I mean and it doesn't have anything to do with sex obviously it is a way of making the other person and I think the other people know when I say this is fucked up they know exactly what I mean it's beyond screwed up it's beyond uh, you know all the other ways of expressing it's a it's a way of expressing how you know absolutely ridiculous and unjust and all the other things all piled together throw in the anger and you get fucked up right I mean that is fucked up and everything about this has been fucked up that's exactly what it is and uh, you know I'm sorry if some people have like tender ears and they just can't stand that word because they can't stand that word not because of the word but because of what it represents them as being you know they're beyond assholes right they're they're fucked so yeah yeah freedom of expression right there people that's my way of expressing that it's beyond all the other ways of expressing it so and that's what this is uh, you know what they've done uh, and what they're doing I'm sure is, is fucked up and they we need to stop this um, you know like I was saying in the the video that's gotten me in so much trouble um, this is not just me you know I mean I didn't really do anything what about all the other people who what about people who really did threaten somebody you know you gotta spend a year in jail because you threaten somebody you gotta have cops coming to your door and dragging you off in the middle of the night and all this kind of stuff oh, man you know if you guys would learn to treat people uh, and I'm not saying everybody's perfect but you guys really fucked up you know and you're pissing people off when people are pissed off they're a, a million times more likely to do something stupid I mean I know I remember when they first called me from the uh, Department of Community Based Services this Chris White and started telling me that uh, you know I'd committed terroristic threatening like fuck no man I didn't do anything and then they told me oh well it was all recorded and I was like well I, I still didn't do anything I, I nothing on that tape was an actual threat to anybody I didn't threaten to bomb anybody I didn't threaten to kill anybody I just said I was that and I was talking about everybody else and then I talked about me anyway I've gone through that about a million times I'm not gonna go through that again the point is is that all this stuff that you're doing to people I mean it just absolutely pisses them off to no end and I know it did piss me off to no end when he did that to me and uh, you know I had to run around for three days trying to find out what it was what was going on and uh, when I got a case number I went right down there wouldn't do anything for me I don't know what their problem was. I got on the phone with them, talked to them uh, several times. Nobody, nobody would help me, but they sure were working hard with the uh, the complainant, you know, the community-based Department of Community-Based Services. And it's no coincidence that this is a government, you know, they'll just go out of their way to help their buddies but me the guy who's being being fucked by them <laughs> no nah. they won't do anything for me they, they wouldn't do anything. they did not want to help me so it's obvious that when it comes to the criminal justice system uh, we're on our own right now and we need to change that so we need to be able to go downtown we need to find out I mean we need to make it so that we can file criminal charges with the courts so we go down to whatever county courthouse 
the federal courthouse, the circuit court, whatever. They're all down there. We might have to replace everybody down there, and we'll ask the, we'll make it so that we can file charges. And once we file charges, there'll be a judge or somebody assigned to us who is trained and required to follow the laws. And therefore, they will uh, uh, order, create warrants, whatever, for uh, to subpoena evidence for us and to get a search warrant and to get an arrest warrant for us free of charge you don't charge or at very least you need to make it so that it's based on income so people who don't have money you can't tell them they can't have this so people come in and they don't want to pay they say I can't afford this then you have to do it you know the, our taxes pay for this kind of stuff and they will in the future. We're going to change it so that they do. Okay? Just like the fire department, like I was saying before. So that's what we need to do, people. We need to do just like we're doing, and that is get rid of these asshole mayors and these asshole sheriffs and all these other elected officials. We need to replace them all with progressives the people will elect progressives to those offices right now they don't even know to vote for those people the only people who know to vote for those people are the people who are voting them in and that's wh exactly what they're doing they're making sure that nobody else knows except for their people to come and vote on election day that's exactly what they're doing and we're gonna change that we're gonna change the fucking world and we're going to rock their world. They're going to wish they never heard of progressive Democrats. Do you think New York State should recognize gay marriage. No. No. Okay. I believe that marriage is not just a bond, but a sacred bond between a man and a woman. I have uh, not uh, supported same-sex marriage. I have supported civil partnerships and uh, contractual relationships. I support marriage for lesbian and gay couples. I support it personally and as a matter of policy and law. So you're saying your opinion on gay marriage changed, or you changed your mind? <laughs> Just you know, I really, I have to say, I think you are um, being Just... very persistent, but you are playing with my words and playing with what is such an I'm just trying to clarify issue. so I can understand. No, I don't think you are trying to clarify. <laughs> I think you're trying to say that, you know, I used to be uh, opposed and now I'm in favor and I did it for political reasons and that's just flat wrong. So let me just state what I feel like you are implying and repudiate it. I have a strong record. I have a great commitment to this issue and I am proud of what I've done and the progress we're making. Yeah, I'm saying, I'm sorry, I, I just want to clarify what I was saying. No, I, I was saying that you maybe really believe this all along, but, you know, believed in gay marriage all along, but felt for political reasons America wasn't ready yet and you couldn't say it. That's what I was thinking. No, that, no, that is not true. Okay. It really is great how long you've supported great gay marriage. Yes. I, I could have supported it sooner. Well, you did it pretty soon. Could have been sooner. Fair point. <laughs> In July, New Hampshire, you told the crowd you, quote, take a backseat to no one when it comes to progressive values. I take a backseat to no one when you look at my record and standing up and fighting for progressive values. Last month in Ohio, you said you plead guilty to, quote, being kind of moderate and center.
Do you change your political identity based on who you're talking to? No. I think that, uh, like most people that I know, I have a range of views, but they are rooted in my values and my experience. You know, I get accused of being kind of moderate and center. I plead guilty. Just for the record, are you a progressive or are you a moderate? I'm a... never before seen video of Hillary Clinton inside the Walmart empire. She is probably one of the most investigative politicians in American history. And this morning you're going to see her in a way you've never seen her before, serving on the board of Walmart. ABC News Chief Investigative Correspondent Brian Ross is here with details on this. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Robin. Although she makes no mention of it in her official biography, Hillary Clinton served for six years on the board of Walmart. The huge retailer criticized by many for its treatment of workers and its strident opposition to unions. Walmart's opposition to unions was led for decades by labor lawyer John Tate, who after his retirement proudly recalled at this company meeting in 2004 what he said was his favorite phrase. Labor unions are nothing but blood-sucking parasites living off of the productive labor of people who work for a living. Hillary Clinton was not present at this Walmart meeting, but Tate was relied on for years to keep unions out at Walmart, including during the six years from 1986 to 92, when Clinton was on the Walmart board and Tate was either an executive or a member of the board himself. Going through the emails, um, there were over 60,000 in total sent and received. About half were work-related and went to the State Department, um, and about half were personal that were not in any way related to my work. When you speak to the public, you say, I turned over everything. That's, for the most part, a direct quote. When you talk to the public, you say, I turned over everything. 90 to 95 percent of and my work-related emails were in the state system. If they wanted to that, see them, they would certainly have been able you to. You know do what? So. That, that, is, that is maybe the tenth time you have cited that figure today. It is. And I have not heard anyone other than you ever cite that figure. Who, who told you that 90 to 95 percent of your emails were, on the state, were in the State Department system? Who told you that? We learned that from the State Department in their analysis of the, of the emails that were already on the system. The Inspector General report found that less than 1%, less than 1% of State Department emails, record emails, were captured. So they give a number of less than 1% and you give a number of 90%. interest in Libya in 2012. Uh, the server contains uh, personal communications from my husband and me. The only time I got on the internet 
I did two emails, and I ordered Christmas presents from a reservation. <laughs> Otherwise, I found people said embarrassing things on emails. I didn't want to be one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and how many angels dance on the head of a pin? I have, I, I have, uh, I have really um, nothing to. Uh, I mean, I have represented Wall Street as a senator from New York, and I went to Wall Street in December of 2007, before the big crash that we had, and I basically said, cut it out. Quit foreclosing on homes. Quit engaging in these kinds of speculative behaviors. Now, who's exactly to blame for the housing crisis? And I think there's plenty of uh, blame to go around. Home buyers who paid extra fees to avoid documenting their income should have known they were getting in over their heads. Of course we have to deal with the problem that the banks are still too big to fail. We can never let the American taxpayer and middle class families ever have to bail out the kind of speculative behavior that we saw. But we also have to worry about some of the other players. AIG, a big insurance company, Lehman Brothers, an investment bank. There's this whole area called shadow banking. That's where the experts tell me the next potential problem could come from. So I'm with both Senator Sanders and Governor O'Malley Actually, in putting a lot of... represented New York and I represented New York on 9-11 when we were attacked where were we attacked we were attacked in downtown Manhattan where Wall Street is I did spend a whole lot of time and effort helping them rebuild that was good for New York it was good for the economy and it was a way to rebuke the terrorists who had attacked our country 9-11 was bad <laughs> As Senator Clinton, the pressures are very different. It's a well-financed industry. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize that the industry that gave the most money to Washington over the past few years was not the oil industry, was not pharmaceuticals, it was consumer credit products. Those are the people the credit card companies have been giving money and they're, they have influence. And this is good with what happened. I said it. But... She, she has taken money from the groups, and more to the point, she worries about them as a constituency. So what does this mean, though, to these people, these millions of people out there, whom the politicians uh, cavort in front of as favoring the middle class, and then are beholden to the powerful interests that undermine the middle class? What does it say about politics today? You know, this is the scary part about democracy today. It's, we're talking again about the impact of money. The credit industry on this bankruptcy bill has spent tens of millions of dollars lobbying. And as their profits grow, they just throw more into lobbying for how they can get laws that will make it easier and easier and easier to drain money out of the, out of the pockets of middle class families.